Hello everybody, it's Steve on Mac25 and this video is about The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. It is the fourth installment in the series and the only Zelda title on the Game Boy. A color update and a remake titled Link's Awakening DX is one of the three Zelda titles for the Game Boy Color. Since its release, Link's Awakening has been popular among fans and critics. By 2004, the original release sold 8.83 million copies worldwide, while Link's Awakening DX sold 2.22 million copies. But in 2009, uh, the Guinness World Records, they named it the 42nd most influential game of all time. And for the story, it takes place after the Oracle series, when Link, he defeats Ganon and Twin Rova in the lands of Holodrum and Labrina. Uh, from Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages, respectively, and he leaves on a raft to to, con to continue his training and improve himself as the hero of Hyrule in that generation. This is in the Downfall timeline, but um, he uh, the story is that he was he, he uh, after re after regaining peace in Hyrule, Labrina, and Holodrum, he. He, he didn't get to enjoy the tranquility he worked so hard to achieve for long, and he eventually became restless. Feeling in need of training or enlightenment, he embarked on a journey and sailed across the oceans in a small sailboat. Eventually, Link completed his training in foreign countries and began to sail back to his home of Hyrule. But suddenly, the seas turned rough and the skies became dark. Link valiantly tried to, he tried to uh, fight the strong currents of the waves, even tying himself to the ship with some rope. But a bolt of lightning they struck the ship and everything went dark. And eventually Link he woke up on a faraway island with a young girl named Marin walking along the shores of the island's beach. She suddenly spotted Link Link laying on the sands and when she looked closer she found him and, and took him to her house in Maid Village. And uh, Link he heard the voice of a girl from beyond the darkness. He, he mistook it to be... Princess, he, he had mistaken it to be the uh, Princess Zelda, but he woke up to find out that it was the voice of Marin. And it turns out that miraculously, Link was ashore on, washed ashore on Kaholan Island. He began his preparations to leave the island, and Taran, Marin's father, gave him back his shield. Yet Link's sword was nowhere to be found, and he searched on the island's beach, which he found eventually next to his wrecked boat. And suddenly a mysterious owl f flew down to him, and explained that the mountaintops of the island is a giant egg, and inside sleeps a, sleeps a being known as a windfish. The owl says that if the windfish that the windfish the windfish must be awakened, for that is the only way Link can leave the island. And he tells Link that he needed to go into the woods to find a key, and then flies away. And then he had nothing but a puzzling riddle on his questions. He heeded the owl's words and, he, and went into the forest, and he eventually found a tail key. And the owl reappeared and told him to go to the tail cave and to use that key to get inside. And he did, and he made it into his first dungeon. After defeating the first boss, Link, he found a magical instrument, the Full Moon Cello, which is one of the eight instruments, uh, one of the eight siren instruments, instruments to wake up the windfish. And and uh, the owl explained that he he had to retrieve the other seven if he was to awaken. With the weight of the windfish, and from then on, Link he travels all over the island to to destroy the the, the, the minions and the dungeons and reclaim the, the the remaining instruments of the sirens. And the minions that they, they are they are led by Nightmare, who is a monster that's haunting the windfish in his in his sleep. And what you might call. After getting eight instruments and, and going through Link's journey, uh, long story short, um, he learned how he learned from Link. Eventually, Link he learned how from Marin how to play the Ballad of the Windfish on his ocarina, which was the Song of Awakening. But that was within the journey, and and uh, Link he 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 could, as he was going to different dungeons, and once he got all all the instruments of the sirens he went to to the nightmares domain and he uh he defeated the nightmare that took on different forms of link's past such as uh ganon and akinem and other monsters and as soon as link he defeated other monsters from other dungeons 
they warn him that if he if he if he wake up the wind fish, the island the island would disappear and everything would disappear. And that's a very sketchy uh, that's a very sketchy uh, situation right there. Which Link he had no choice but to do so if he wanted to leave the island, but then he he, he would uh, risk he would risk the entire island and all the all the beings uh, living on it. But um and uh, Link he also learned that uh, the owl was part of the Windfish's spirit and the guardian of, of his dream world. And it was very, but it was very peaceful on the Windfish uh, on, on the Kohola Island until nightmares began to invade it. But once he defeated the nightmare and woke up the Windfish with the with the instruments, uh, the island slowly disappeared, and uh, all the all the people, including uh, Taran, Marin, and the other villagers, they 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 vanish. And the Windfish he he soars. On the sky, takes the shape of a humpback whale, and he soars above the, the skies. And um, Link, he 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 awakens on a on a piece of his uh, raft that 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 was a uh, part of that was a part of a ship, and it's floating in the in the middle of the ocean. And Link, he woke up to he he woke up to acknowledge that uh, that the whole world had existed in the Windfish's dreams. And, uh, and, uh, whatchamacall, if, if here's, here's certain criteria, if Link, he doesn't die, or if he, he's not defeated, then there's a special cutscene where a seagull fly, w flies away, but Marin, uh, Marin's uh, icon is on the screen, which means that, um, uh, Marin's dream came true, that she wanted to fly the skies above the sea as a, a as a seagull, or... It was just a, um, it was just a memento from Koholan Island, whatever the case may be. But uh, that's something that that still wasn't solved to this day. And uh, throughout the adventures, Link he tried, like uh, he was trying to learn about the characters, and Marin tried to she tried to be social so, so socialize with Link and try to and learn where he's from and and what kind of a person. Uh, he is, as well as given the background of the island, but uh, let's see. Uh, throughout the other the other components would be graphics. They were good. Like uh, with the original Link's Awakening, they were like black and white. But the remake on the Game Boy Color, um, it had many re references to Mario games, such as Yoshi doll and uh, and Taran looking like. Uh, one of the uh, Mario from the Super Mario Bros, and um, they had a lot of things, and they added color to that to that game to the game to the screen as well. And uh, but it's it's a, it's a great adventure. Like I had no problem checking it out. It's just that it was so sad to acknowledge that Link he put in all the effort to wake up the windfish only for the island to disappear and uh, along with the other people and it's a bitter a bitter pill to swallow but uh it had to be done but link his whereabouts were unknown as that was his last adventure as the hero of, of hyrule in that generation uh it's uh it, it was the first game when it was when it first came out years uh, many a few decades ago it was the first game to take place on a location uh, excluding Hyrule, so yeah, that's what that's what marked it. But this is a it's the fourth game chronologically in the downfall timeline, but it takes place generations before a link between worlds and before Ganon resurrects himself and and, and the and, and, and the. And the plot and the storyline goes further into the next gen into the next uh, couple centuries, but that's another video I'm gonna uh, delve into. Um, what well, one thing about this game? Another few things I want to point out is that uh, a list of songs were playable on the game's instrument that must be learned and have different functions. Although unlike an Ocarina of Time, in some later games, the songs simply play when selected rather than having to be played note by note. The first occurrence, it features the first occurrence of fishing, and unique background music for each dungeon rather than reusing the same single theme or few themes as its pre predecessors did. Uh, most games after Link's Awakening follow, follow its lead in this respect, 
The first string sequence uh, in, in a series was also introduced in this game. The first clear example of a lava or fire themed dungeon in the series with Turtle Rock. And uh, it features the rock's feather, another uh, item that was uh, added and introduced in the series. And an owl who pre periodically meets Link and gives him advice on where to go or what to do next. But that's also like uh, Kippur Gapur from Ocarina of Time. And uh, uh, also has a set of well hidden collectible items that have no use by themselves but can be redeemed at, at certain location to reveal useful items. Like secret seashells and Link's Awakening with gold skulltillas and postals as examples of successors. And uh, what you might call. The. That's, oh, in this game, it's also the first defeat, not to not feat, well, technically it doesn't feature Ganon, but it also doesn't feature Princess Zelda. Like, Ganon, he would appear in Link's Awakening, uh, The Adventure of Link, uh, in the game over sequence if Link died in that game, but other than that, he's not in uh, The Adventure of Link, he's deceased, but that's another, that's in another video that I'm going to review on. Um, it, does, it doesn't feature, it doesn't fall, it doesn't... It's not part of the Triforce saga with the Triforce and being in the land of Hyrule. It's uh, Link's own adventures. And, uh, let's see what I'm going to say. Uh, that's all I can think of off the top of my head. But, uh, this game, it's, it, it, it's good to check out. It's, it's worth, it's worth, uh, looking into. Even if you don't have a Game Boy Color or, or a Game Boy. They would have it on the virtual console. I never tried that, but I check it out on YouTube and check the walkthroughs there. It's, it's a nice game. I think it'd be hard to play for, for me, but uh, that's how gameplay was back then. Uh, anyhow, I'm going to wrap it up. If you have any uh, questions or comments, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments section, or if you want to discuss anything about this game, you have the right to do so in the comments section. And if, and don't and if you really like the video, you can like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. Once again, my name is Stephen McNamara, aka Steve Mac 25, and I will catch you on the next video. See you then.